parts. <laughs> okay. Now, where were we? Erdogan and the Turks. <laughs> okay. Okay, I hope you're seeing uh, uh, Angela Merkel and Erdogan, are you? Yeah. Well, thank goodness for small breaks. Okay, um, so uh, Angela thought that uh, Germany had done its share. And so uh, she uh, uh, was also um, lukewarm and, it, and unfortunately uh just think what if what if you know eu would have gotten young and energetic people and turkey would would uh, be solidly a european uh country uh just uh sad so let's see i've got to okay so um uh when when joining the eu didn't work he um uh, uh, and he, he blast uh, the nationalist uh, because of the Kurds, he became a nationalist. Um, and today uh, he's chasing uh, Kurds, even in Sweden. Um, and he has uh, a notion of uh, being another head of uh, a re reinvigorated Ottoman Empire. Um, instead of being part of Europe. Um, and uh, so let's see, I went backwards. Okay, forwards this time. Um, so um, I wanted to uh, just briefly say something about his ambition to see a renewed Ottoman influence and, and sphere of influence uh, and, and sphere of influence. Um, and in particular, I want to point out this uh, um, map. Um, you can see at the, the bottom uh, the uh, 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 map of Azerbaijan and um, uh, uh, Armenia. And you see the, the little uh, Azar exclave uh, uh, down there, Nak Um And you can see that the line uh, between Turkey and Baku is interrupted by that, that strip of Armenia. So when um, the fighting broke out uh, over Nogo uh, Karabakh, um, uh, Putin came sweeping in and he's sort of a, a champion of Armenia. Um, and he said, I'll provide the Russian peacekeepers for a deal uh, that will enable the creation of the uh, Nachavan Corridor, which sounds like, well, just the little roads uh, connecting Nachavan to Azerbaijan. What, what difference uh, could that make? And that was almost uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, but Erdogan was very um, uh, excited about that um, uh, because that was going to give him a, a straight shot to Baku um, and uh, by extension um, onto the uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative that China was putting up. More importantly, it was going to allow him to bypass Tbilisi and, and the EU, by the, the way. And it was like a new Turkish dream, a silk railroad, uh, if you will, something they called a middle corridor. Um, and that, that middle corridor, uh, the only problem is you've got to go to Tehran, through Tehran. Um, but it allows you uh, to uh, avoid um, Moscow, interestingly uh, enough, and we'll see that in just a second. And it takes you all the way to Uyghur territory. And I, I think Iko has commented that we know a kid 
uh, who studied Turkish and, and, and went on the Silk Road and could understand the Uyghurs uh, uh, because they are a Turkic uh, people. Um, and this is just a, a little bit more uh, detailed uh, map. Uh, at the very bottom, you see the uh, 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 corridor uh, at the very bottom, uh, uh, allowing them to avoid uh, a lot of the complications of, of heading north, but also allows them to avoid the Trans-Siberian uh, railway, uh, Railroad and the Trans-Manchurian Railroad. Um, so, um, uh, and, and we've, we've heard this as, as we've read Frankopan and the Silk Roads, that the bread baskets are of, of Southern Russia are really, really important. And this was going to facilitate also the, the, this development of railroad and trade was going to help, uh, 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 grain from the steppes reach Asian mar uh, markets, and by the way, uh, hurt USA uh, uh, farmers. Um, and so this this is just looking at uh, uh, Russian wheat uh, export exports in the uh, a light of some of these uh, developments, um, and. Uh, everything was going swimmingly. The Silk Road, Belt and Road, uh, 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 a, uh, a, a club of autocrats partially based on, on the foundation of, of wheat, which was the name of one of the chapters in, in Frankopan's uh, Silk Roads. This is an update. This just uh, uh, came from an uh, article uh, earlier this month uh, from the, the Economist. And it pointed out that there were, uh, and if you look at the, uh, I've lost the use of, ah, here's my pointer, it's back. Uh, if you look at the um, so, uh, 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 pr a pretty bright red um, dotted lines, uh, you'll uh, see this is the, the new proposals. And you can see it goes right through uh, uh, Kabul. So there is a possibility of um, linking to the sea. Uh, if a, a link uh, through uh, Taliban territory um, it can be secured. The interesting thing in this article was the Taliban is enthusiastic about this project. This railroad that would uh, uh, connect to um, Istanbul, by the way, they're, pl they're planning an uh, uh, underwater uh, a railroad link uh, under the Bosphorus that would be part of this. So you go all the way from the Is Istanbul station um, through Tehran um, down uh, into uh, uh, Turkmenistan, uh, Samarkand, um, and uh, on up uh, and, and it's this uh, pass here that is the other new link that that would allow all of this uh, middle corridor that uh, Erdogan has dreamed about and reestablishing uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Ottoman Empire redo. Um, this uh, uh, would allow that to happen without going through Russia at all. And this was a big point of the article. The, 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 these countries uh, uh, didn't feel bad about dealing uh, Moscow uh, out. So this, this old uh, route here uh, uh, would be bypassed. And the irony is that a lot of this railroad track was laid uh, at the time of, of the Tsars, and now it's going to uh, bypass. Uh, Moscow. Um, so uh, my my question is, and this is the the kind of question that Timothy Snyder asks, right? What if um, uh, his thing about the, the large forces of history uh, uh, and the determinism of large forces? Um, he thinks that, that chance and luck uh, uh, play a big role, and he uses our recent experience of the Ukraine as an example par excellence. 
what if um, uh, Keith had, had fallen? What if it turned out that Zelensky didn't have the spine of Churchill? Well, uh, what, and the other questions to ask, what if the EU had folded Turkey in, into Europe? What if his outreach to the Kurds uh, had uh, been successful? Um, the the uh, future of all uh, uh, Kurds uh, sprinkled throughout um, Iraq and, and Iran, and obviously Turkey, Turkey and, and Syria. Um, what if his uh, compromise on Cyprus had won him a Nobel Prize? Uh, what would that have done to, to his uh, ego? And what would have happened if the U.S. had not invaded your, uh, Iraq? This comes up over and over again. It was uh, it stuck in my craw, and it stuck in in uh, I think everybody's uh, craw, but it also stuck in Putin's craw because he he saw the U U.S. break international norms. Um, so. Um, uh, the United States was on the right side of this. Um, it, uh, we supported vigorously uh, their ascension into uh, the EU. Uh, our our, our uh, uh, lobbying was so intensive on this in European uh, uh, capitals that it, it arose EU suspicions. And so it appeared that uh, EU had accepted uh, Turkey as an official uh, candidate in 1999 uh, in, in Helsinki. Um, but the Iraq war shifted US influence over both the EU and Turkey. Um, and uh, uh, Turkey decided not to uh, let uh, uh, America use the, its uh, military uh, bases in eastern Turkey as part of the war effort, a surprising decision for everybody um, in America and Europe. Um, and that reduced uh, Turkey's chances for EU membership. Um, and it bought the chaotic Middle East uh, uh, into Europe's uh, backyard, worrying Europe even more about extending membership to Turkey. So what if we hadn't invaded Iraq? I, I just, you just have to ask these questions. Okay, so uh, that, that was uh, uh, Turkey. Uh, ostensibly, we're uh, supposed to be doing uh, Ukrainian history, but so much is going on and the world is, is shifting under our, our feet, particularly uh, in, in the last uh, month. Uh, so we're kind of doing a, a potpourri. Um, uh, there was one loose strand from last week that I wanted to clear up. I put up uh, uh, a assertion that Putin had uh, written um, uh, an op-ed uh, for the New York Times. And I was questioned about that. And so I, I, I've gone back uh, and uh, detailed it a little bit more. Um, his op-ed published in 2013 uh, uh, complained that in 2012, uh, Hillary had uh, been a cheerleader for the um, election uh, protests. Huh. Uh, and we saw uh, last week, we reviewed those, those protests. And we asked, where are all those uh, people who were in the streets in 2012 being uh, urged on and led by uh, uh, Navalny and uh, Nemstov, the, 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 the politician who was murdered on the bridge outside of the, the Kremlin? Well, what happened is com a congressman erupted in hysterics and attacked, uh, attacked the New York Times. Um, and the, the, the editorial uh, page editor said, hey, listen, <laughs> his editorial was well-written, well-argued. I don't agree with many of the points, but that's uh, 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 irrelevant. There's no, no ideological litmus test for a, an op-ed article. Well, that's an interesting topic today, uh, isn't it? Uh, and uh, he, the, he didn't think this was aiding and abetting 
Um, he thought everybody wants to hear from uh, Putin right now. And this article was fasc fascinating and detailed. He did not back off at all. Okay, moving on to an, uh, a domestic um, uh, uh, Russian uh, protest and criticism. I talked last week how uh, uh, Ala Pukcheva, uh, 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 a combination of oh, Dar Dolly Parton and the uh, Parton and Madonna and uh, 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 any other diva uh, you want to throw in. She is quite something. She's uh, uh, 73, um, and and she uh, protested. Uh, she's her husband, who is a comedian, 27 years younger than she is, uh, had recently been uh, classified as a foreign agent uh, for which he had to register. And she said, "If he's a foreign agent, so so am I." And she uh, uh, was pulled in for questioning and is, uh, quote, under investigation this, this week. Um, uh, but she's not backing off, at least not publicly. And what does being a for, uh, foreign agent mean? You're uh, prohibited from working with uh, minors in some universities. Uh, you have to provide quarterly financial reports um, and uh, uh, everything you write, even on the internet, you've got to sign off as a foreign agent. Um, so the, here she is with, with her husband and he, he, he uh, uh, registered uh, in uh, uh, this week on social media on Saturday. Uh, by the way, he's famous for his Putin imp impersonations. Uh, but he weighed in and he, he just said, hey, listen, I'm not involved in, in politics. I do uh, satire. I don't sell my, my opinion. I don't trade in conscience. Ukraine, I gave concerts there. I received money for doing my concerts, but I haven't done that recently. Um, and so uh, I, I, I want to take a moment and uh, uh, sort of uh, drill down on an odd coincidence between uh, Pukacheva's name and the Pukachev uh, rebellion, and it's relevant. Okay, here's my justification. Um, the, it has to do with uh, Cossacks and the, the, the Cossack spirit particularly claimed by the, by the uh, Ukrainians. You'll remember in a, one of our previous presentations, I presented the anthem of the uh, Ukraine, which, which has a, a line glorifying uh, Cossacks. Um, uh, uh, and so uh, it was a Cossack, Pukachev, that led a rebellion at the uh, uh, late 18th uh, century. And it's going to be relevant in just a second because that uh, uh, a Cossack spirit, I think, has, has played a role in the defense of, of Kiev. I'll make that argument in just a second. Um, so uh, the rebellion brought together uh, uh, a disaffected peasants and serfs under the leadership of uh, uh, the Cossacks. Probably uh, Tatars were also folded in, into that and it uh, uh, challenged the, the, the Russian uh, state. Catherine the Great's army eventually put down uh, Pukachev and he was beheaded and dismembered in the center of Moscow, um, as, as was the style of the day. Um, and, and so um, uh, 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 a writer wrote uh, this week, Puk Pukachev is not Pukachev, but Putin's Russia is not Catherine's Russia either. Um, and so uh, here's the article that I think uh, links the spirit of the, the Cossacks uh, with um, uh, the, the current resistance that we, we've seen so dramatically uh, in the last month. Uh, this was a slide from last week. Um, but I didn't go through the article, and I think it's worth going through to make the point uh, uh, that I'm trying to make. So I'm going through the article, and I'm using a lot of the pictures and photos and the visuals, because I think 
they're illuminating and they explain where this uh, resistance came from. So this is the, the Cossack spirit. This is one of my favorite uh, portraits of that, which certainly uh, captures the, the feeling <laughs> that you might have on the, the frontier. Um, and, and Pukachev, he holds a court. It was said his court in um, uh, uh, southern Ukraine was as large as uh, Catherine's. Um, and uh, he went to uh, Kazan because uh, we know uh, uh, th that uh, uh, Kazan, uh, uh, the area of uh, Kazan is uh, uh, where the largest uh, uh, population of Tatars exist, um, uh, Tatarstan. Uh, and he had in his coalition uh, the Tatars of, of Crimea. Um, and they were a hardy bunch. The rebellion continued through the, the, the winter, but it didn't end well uh, for, for um, uh, Pukhachev. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, the um, uh, Soviets have uh, adopted that, that spirit too. And we saw that uh, Putin had Cossacks um, providing an element of security at the uh, Olympic Games in Sochi. Uh, the, you'll remember from one of our earlier presentations and they were pretty brutal in putting down protesters. Uh, so that was uh, um, uh, 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 my introduction to this article uh, that was written by uh, a, a pretty well-known uh, writer who's been uh, covering the Ukraine for uh, uh, quite a while. And uh, he reports on uh, this ragtag uh, army that used whatever weapons were uh, available. Uh, private homes were open to, to fighters. Uh, 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 think of our uh, American uh, Revolution, which was against uh, uh, the, the Brits quartering their soldiers in Boston. Well, the Kiev people uh, uh, quartered in, any uh, 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 resistors. They shimmied up trees looking for a, a good uh, cell phone reception. Um, uh, the insurgency fused uh, uh, seamlessly with the army. Um, uh, as one of them said, we're, we're a hive of, of, of bees. Um, uh, uh, one of us can, uh, can be attacked, um, but uh, a, a thousand uh, uh, of us cannot be. So these were the citizen soldiers that were actually the, the Greek ideal. If you look back to um, uh, uh, what en enabled Greek success, the idea of the, the citizen so soldier and, and uh, learning how to form a phalanx. Um, and uh, uh, one, this uh, uh, article in the Wall Street uh, Journal calls this the most consequential battle in Europe since World War II. Um, I don't I know any of us want to argue against that, but we can in the, in the discussion uh, section. And Iko, I, I, uh, I've uh, uh, misplaced my uh, iPad along the way, so you'll have to keep time for me. Um, it's a quarter till right now. Okay, five more minutes. Um, uh, and so um, I at least want to finish uh, uh, this article. So uh, uh, this is the, the ragtag uh, article, uh, most consequential citizen volunteers. And this woman uh, is an investigative journalist before the war, but became joined the insurgency. Uh, and uh, uh, carried a bazooka. Uh, uh, I'll go through these uh, photos uh, uh, pretty pretty quick. Uh, this guy helped flood um, an area where Russian troops were. Uh, we've we've seen you've all seen these these pictures. Um, uh, the, these tanks were were identified by spotters in all along uh, uh, the road. Um, uh, the, the insurgency uh, very early saved the airport, which was obviously a, a, a target uh, for 
uh, the Russian uh, army. The insurgencies protected that critically. Um, uh, this uh, 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 was a couple of guys on the special forces team that did that. Um, they uh, uh, destroyed bridges to slow down uh, the Russian uh, advance. Um, and this is uh, uh, the dam that they they blew uh, uh, that uh, uh, flooded an area that that the Russians had counted on as being dry. Uh, this is uh, the map of the of the dam and, and the movement of the uh, insurgents. Um, and then the drones. Uh, uh, this is a, a guy named Frodo. Uh, who, uh, who was a, a famous uh, drone uh, uh, pilot uh, 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 with these uh, drones that actually could strike uh, with, with weapons, um, pretty big drones. Um, uh, and then this is, they had a reconnaissance team uh, coordinated uh, with the command center of the, uh, of the army. Uh, so you think that, that, that they were prepared. This isn't something you throw up in a, a couple of days. Um, there was a big fight for a mall, the giraffe uh, mall. Uh, this is a map of that. And uh, the, uh, for some reason, this was uh, strategic and the uh, Ukrainian army um, uh, uh, managed to keep it out of the hands of the Russians. Um, uh, and, and then there were uh, a, a, a lot of uh, uh, informal communications uh, on the route, uh, and uh, ammunition was uh, moved at whatever was available, in this case, a shopping cart. Um, there is a special member of uh, 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 the Greeks group, and uh, uh, they were from um, Maripol. Uh, which, interestingly enough, was uh, originally a, uh, a, a Greek city. Um, uh, so uh, they came north uh, and installed video cameras on this uh, tower in particular to spy on, on Russian uh, troops. Um, okay. Uh, what, what's the time, Iko? It's about 11 minutes till. I'm going to take another another five minutes and get through through this part. We talked about this lady last last week. She is a real hawk on uh, uh, Russian Russia today. Um, and uh, last week we uh, she made this outrageous suggestion that a referendum uh, uh, be held. And then we thought, well, that's crazy. That's panicking. It's incoherent. They don't even uh, control. Uh, the territory, how can they have a referendum? Well, they're doing it. And uh, this last weekend, she got on a show with this guy um, uh, and uh, they were complaining about the recruiters specifically. Um, and uh, so uh, Vladimir here says, have they forgotten how to do their jobs? And, and uh, apparently, there was even a recruiter who had drafted uh, one of his enemies out of revenge. Uh, the, the recruits were be get, being given rusty uh, old uh, weapons, no helmets, no body armor, and uh, Vladimir is, is angry, uh, and, and he's in discussion uh, with uh, uh, Margarita. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing a show to, together. And he says, I refuse to be silent about it. Um, and uh, he uh, is, acknowledges the split in, in Russian society, society, acknowledges the Russians have uh, left. Semenyan says, good riddance, uh, you'll be back. Um, uh, but uh, Vladimir says, uh, 300 people have called me for advice, apparently, on uh, what to do about the, the draft. Um, uh, Simonyan says, you know, uh, we all prefer it wasn't like this. We thought this was going to happen with less blood. We didn't think there'd be as much resistance from NATO. Um, well, but in any war, you always uh, uh, overestimate your own 
and underestimate the, uh, your opponents. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, pretty interesting. Um, and uh, this is the first public mobilization since uh, World War II. Um, uh, but uh, Vladimir is particularly angry, angry that there have been some people in their 60s that have been drafted. Uh, uh, and uh, Vladimir says these overzealous recruit recruitment officers should be shot. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, or at least sent the, uh, to fight on the Eastern uh, 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 front themselves. Um, uh, Simonyan allowed <laughs> that she opposed the shooting of officers. She said, well, okay, Vladimir says, I'd, I'd, I'd simply drag them out publicly um, and uh, send them to Donbass, um, which is interesting. Uh, because that that makes it seem like going to fight in the war is an onus, not not a, a, a duty. Um, so uh, hours after Vladimir made these statements, a young Russian man did open fire uh, at an enlistment office. Uh, and now this Vladimir's rant is circulating. Um, on social media. And my understanding is uh, 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 this morning there was a, another uh, uh, shooting. Uh, so uh, uh, the guy that the uh, first shot said, okay, uh, obviously he's mentally disturbed. No one's gonna fight now, let's all go home. Um, uh, he's obviously uh, being held. So it's almost like uh, uh, Simonyan and, and uh, Vladimir Solovyov are, are playing good cop, uh, bad cop. Um, uh, Simonyan has received 700 complaints about mobilization and she is going to publicize where the problems are. That's her solution. Um, uh, uh, Vladimir, is uh, uh, asking a question, could we have executions by shooting? So th there you have uh, 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 a split there, <laughs> the good cop, bad cop. Um, Simeon, I'll close with this, uh, uh, says, hey, we've got a lot of oligarchs and, and rich people. Um, and uh, I think that they got to share their wealth with those that are being mobilized. I know these uh, a lot of these rich people personally. Let's create a, a, a united front um, for for uh, those who aren't with us. Good riddance. And this uh, uh, effort to, to create a, a united uh, front has been picking up steam on Russia uh, state uh, media. Uh, so Margarita Simonyan uh, seemed to have uh, uh, some uh, power in her suggestions last week, and who knows what what will happen. She she uh, uh, does allow that she doesn't. Her kids aren't old enough, uh, but uh, mothers wh whose kids are old enough, it's shameful um, if if they try to protect their their, their children. She says. Comrades, this, this is not a time to get people uh, angry. This has a major uh, impact. And she mentions the mutiny on the battleship Potemkin uh, in 1905, a famous uh, uh, mutiny of troops who were fed uh, maggot infested uh, 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 meat. And uh, she says, you're, to you're toying with armed people. Um, if these uh, volunteers are going to be given guns, even though they might be uh, rusty. Um, and this, uh, uh, just as a, an aside, led to a, uh, the making of a famous uh, movie. And it's the first, my first uh, uh, exposure to uh, Odessa and what a, a, a unique place uh, Odessa is. Um, the, the battleship uh, Potemkin. Uh, Sergei Eisenstein, who was um, uh, Lat uh, Latvian, we visited uh, his uh, home uh, when we were in uh, Riga, um, and he made this the movie uh, with these famous scenes on the uh, Odessa uh, steps. 
of uh, uh, civilian protesters being uh, uh, massacred uh, who were sympathetic um, to the uh, uh, mutiny on the, the Potemkin, uh, famous scenes. Um, Potemkin, uh, Iko mentioned last week uh, who, he, who Potemkin actually was. He was Catherine the Great Slover, uh, and he uh, was uh, himself re, uh, uh, should be given the credit for the spread of uh, Russian control in what was called uh, Novo Russia, New Russia. Uh, this is uh, what uh, Potemkin uh, uh, accomplished, including uh, the, the uh, Crimea. And he died in, in 1791. Um, and he uh, broke, in doing so, he broke the, the back of the Cossacks uh, host. The, and this is a name that, that, that we're hearing more and more in area of Ukraine. Uh, the, the Zaporizhia uh, Cossacks. Um, and uh, 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 just to bring it full, uh, full circle, uh, that was part of the Pukachev uh, rebellion. So uh, Cossacks. Um, the Potemkin village, just as a, a final aside, I can't cut, stop making connections. Potemkin village is a, is a fake front uh, that was uh, that uh, apparently uh, Potemkin used along the railroad tracks to impress uh, uh, Catherine, his former uh, lover, when she visited Crimea in, in 1787. Uh, uh, we heard about Potemkin village uh, uh, when Mao was doing the Great Leap Forward. He was taken around the countryside and showed uh, uh, impossible uh, bounty of, of uh, grain. Uh, and it was all the, the weakness of despots uh, to not get the uh, information they, they need to get and underlings being uh, intimidated and, and trying uh, to, to please them. So this, this, this Potemkin village uh, was uh, along the Dnieper uh, River, which we're hearing about more and more these days. Uh, uh, Russian lawmakers have, have uh, expressed uh, considerable, uh, 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 same, the same message. Uh, Navalny uh, abides, he got the, the message out um, to resist. Uh, and uh, uh, this is from the economist, uh, the Google search on how to leave uh, Russia. Uh, and there we go. Uh, uh, I, uh, when next week I'll I'll start with uh, the the interesting developments, um, the uh, the the cool relationship between China and India. Uh, they are uh, not not only have they both uh, uh, expressed uh, disquiet at the the Ukraine, but. Uh, the Samarkand last week, it was obvious that China and India are not getting along. They didn't even, uh, uh, Modi and she didn't even acknowledge uh, each other. So um, uh, this world we're, that we're, we're living in is, is uh, very interesting. And it seems like the deck is, is uh, 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 getting uh, shuffled. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, some of what we're going to see the, the the rest of our natural born days will, will be pretty uh, uh, interesting. So may you live in interesting times. That's where I'll stop and op throw it open for uh, 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 comments. Hi, John. This is Homer. And what I find interesting is how parallel um, Putin's ambitions and um, the guy in Turkey, um, Prime Erdogan. Minister Erdogan's ambitions are, Putin wants to recreate an ancient imperial Russia and Erdogan wants to recreate the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> and how did they get along historically? Uh, 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 the the uh, Russian Empire and the 
Ottoman, Ottoman Empire. Uh, I mean, in more recent history, uh, the problem was the Ottoman Empire was the sick old man. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, everybody was hovering around to uh, pick up what they, uh, the areas that they could no longer uh, control. Um, most famously is uh, uh, Bosnia, uh, which uh, um, uh, I think the, 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 the Russians had uh, thought that they had uh, persuaded their Serbian uh, uh, co-religionists that that would be uh, something that they could let go of if Russia would be given um, uh, guarantees to be able to go through the Bosphorus, um, but uh, I, I am uh, that. That's my that's my best shot. Uh, you got the Crimean War uh, that that uh, comes with the uh, uh, the the Russians and the Brits fighting, uh, and the Tatars are, are in the middle of of that war. That's in 1854, and medically, Homer that gave us uh, uh, Florence Nightingale. Yeah and all the advances of, of nursing in 1854. Um, but, but then uh, aside from the Crimean War and, and World War and World War One, <laughs> those little uh, 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 events, where, where were the other, uh, Ramsey, where were the other uh, friction points between um, uh, the Russian Empire and, and the Ottoman Empire? Why? Can I can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Am I talking now? No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got it. You've got it. Um, but the, the Russians were in no position to uh, fight the Ottomans in the 17th century. But the 18th century, they were. And they, and they did. And they did. And they did. And they, and of course, Russia needed a warm sea port. The Ottoman Empire was falling apart. Uh, the Balkans had never become converted to Islam. There was sort of conversion by convenience in the cities, but in the countryside, all the Slavic people maintained their Orthodox religion. So Erdogan and Putin may be destined to conflict if they go forward with pursuing their ambitions. Uh, both, both of them have a short lifespan historically, but for the, for, for, for the next decade, it's going to be a, a hell on hell on. Uh, Oh, and a handbag, exactly. Yeah. And the there's, there's, an, there's another the obvious strong man in, in the world right now who wants to make everything better in America. I mean, Trump is doing the same thing of looking back 40 or 50 years and saying, we used to be great back then, right? Aren't those, I mean, different time frame, but it's the same idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and, and that's the last, the last 20 years has been the age of uh, the strongman populist. Uh, that it's, uh, it's in Egypt uh, uh, as well. It was in the Philippines. Uh, I mean, uh, who, who am I missing? <laughs> no, you're, missing you're missing the new Italian prime minister. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Bolisaro, uh, it's, uh, it's all over the place, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Where so you go, uh, the Aquino family is back in power in the Philippines. Um, it's uh, the, the international order that was established after World War II is gone. It disappeared and it went, it went to, to hell in a handbag with Reagan, Thatcher, etc., and uh, neoliberal uh, economics. And uh, reinventing it is going to take. Uh, Going into Iraq didn't help it. <laughs> but, well, those are neoliberals. Is it the same? We should have never lost in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. We can make democracy work in Iraq. What a bunch of buffoons. Can yeah. I ask a question? Um, you said that the EU um, was suspicious of US supporting Turkey's entrance into the EU. What did they think we wanted out of that? Um, I suppose. Uh, 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 control um, that that uh, at the time um, uh, remember uh, 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 Margaret Thatcher was was kind of our uh, ace in the hole in influencing uh, European uh, politics 
and I guess uh, they thought that uh, uh, Turkey would 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 sense uh, would sense that up. Uh, what was our motive uh, in in the the eighteen uh, eighties? I suppose it was. Uh, uh, to um, uh, just outflank the uh, the Soviet Union. Um, no, no, but this is much later, though. The, well, they... no, no, and uh, when they were doing all the lobbying, it was the eighteen uh, eighties, uh, and then of course eighteen nineties. Uh, that that it was a whole new, uh, it was a whole new ball game. Well, yeah, but um, the EU being suspicious. The EU was after World War II, wasn't it? Yeah. So well, what were they? Yeah, well, but the, was the, yeah, that took a long time. You don't get you don't get to the EU. You get you get some trade negotiations. The, what we call the EU doesn't happen until, until the mid eighties. Um, it was called the Common Market. You could, you could, first, it was the European Coal and Steel Community. Then it was the common market. Uh, it was all, all economic. It was very little in terms of uh, common citizenship and the right to go, go uh, work in any country. Uh, a, 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 a single currency, all that stuff came pretty late. Uh, so they I, were just concerned that we were trying to grab a bigger portion than they did. They they said, "You guys don't get it. Uh, we we got." We got immigrant problems that you don't have any idea about. Um, and we now know uh, <laughs> they do have immigrant problems. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's why they see the like immigrant it. problems. Bye, Jeannie. Jeannie, you're muted. Glad you could make it. See you next Thank week. Thank you so much. Yeah, looking forward to it. See you next week. Yeah. Okay, good. Bye. Bye. All right. There's a, there's a small, it, it's probably not worth a whole lot. I don't know what's worth a lot, but the, the Pugachev uh, episode with Catherine the Great is potentially instructive to some degree. Catherine the Great was perceived to be, up until that time, one of these enlightened uh, monarchs, enlightened despots. You had Frederick the Great. And, Catherine the Great and, and uh, somebody who I'm, whose name I'm forgetting in the Austrian Empire, they were all talking to Voltaire and, uh, and involved in enlightenment and more uh, what we would call human rights and human progress and so forth. And there was a perception, um, as there was with Martin Luther way back earlier, uh, among peasants and among the poor, that the monarch, uh, and this in the case of Russia, Catherine the Great, was on their side. And if they rebelled, um, that she would be uh, uh, sympathetic and, and helpful. And that sort of uh, led to, to some strengthening of Pugachev and so forth and so forth. And of course, Catherine realized pretty, pretty early on that this is not what she had in mind, <laughs> that uh, there was going to be more human rights and something uh, vaguely uh, approaching democracy and, and wealth given to the poor and so forth. Her, she and her advisor said, no, that's the end of that. So after Pugachev, she said, we're done with that crap. And, and told all of her rich landowning uh, crowd down there in the South that you're talking about, said, you do whatever the hell you want with this shit. You're, you're, it's, it's free game. All I want from you is the, 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 uh, your, uh, your assigned tax burden paid to me and, uh, and the serfs are yours to do with as you wish. Which sounds exactly like Putin's arrangement with the oligarchs. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was, it was around that time, right, that uh, you got uh, uh, Frederick the Great and Catherine the Great and uh, Marie Theresa of Austria, and uh, apparently there was a conversation early on between Marie Theresa and and Catherine the Great about. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary Teresa being somewhat sympathetic to the, 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 the Polish uh, people. Of course, uh, uh, she, uh, uh, Catherine pointed out, oh, so you, don't, you, you wouldn't welcome controlling Lvov? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there they were, and there they were.
But I mean, with Catherine bringing in all these uh, French intellectuals and stuff, it was more just to uh, uh, help her ego because they really did say, they really talked about the enlightened leaders, but not so much that the people were enlightened, right? I mean, it was more- Right, but, but it was gonna be top-down reform. And uh, yeah, and, and that and and, and the, the as as in much of the world, you start hearing that you're you're one of three hundred peasants that can read, but uh, you spread the word. You say you you kind of get sympathetic. It's just like happened with uh, with uh, Martin Luther in, in Germany. Peasants said this guy's on our side. He's talking about the common man being equal to uh, everybody else, and, uh, and 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 Luther's on our side. The, the the local German princes had to grab Luther by the throat and say, "Next time you get up on that damn pulp, you tell them what the deal is. Uh, that is, uh, that you're you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. The king is still in charge. The princes are still in charge. And if you don't, Martin Luther, uh, we're not protecting you anymore." So <laughs> uh, Luther had to compromise uh, what was clearly a revolutionary message and so did they. Well, and, and, and it wasn't too long after the, the Pukachev uh, revolt that you got, oh, the American Revolution and the French Revolution, so. It was in the cards at that point, exactly. And uh, perceived by those that had money of uh, a damaging, a scary uh, possibility for them. Okay. All right, well, well, I tried to keep this to an hour with the uh, uh, embarrassing technological interruption in the middle. Uh, I, I think we're about uh, an hour. So uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, any, any urgent? Uh, um... Yeah, keep your eye next June. It's the next elections in Turkey. Um, oh, wow. Chances, chances seem relatively high at the moment. People will be thrown out. The, the urban, if there were elections in Iran, that would be happening too, so. Yeah. That, yeah. That, so that, that, all, that all sounds good. The question is, so when these new people come in power, what do they accomplish? Uh, are they able anymore to control the wealth these countries have? Or is that, uh, is that gonna take the uh, pickety kind of revolution that these guys can't possibly control? Are you gonna, you gonna tax us? We're gonna send our money to Cyprus, wherever the hell we want to send. Yeah, yeah. In interesting times. So, interesting times. Thank you all for attending. Okay, I'm going to go back and look for the Orioles game. Do you know what channel is on? The Orioles Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Bye, Ramsey. <laughs> thank you. Take care, John. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>